Hey everyone, welcome to today's video, which is going to be five tips that I have for studying music at college or university. Originally, this video was going to be a sort of long-winded story about my time studying music. I did a four-year degree in popular music, which is basically everything that's not classical music. They had a separate course for that. I'm not saying that classical isn't a popular... Anyway, I digress. I did a four-year degree in popular music and I graduated last year. So instead of telling you a big long story about that time, I thought it would be more beneficial if I could break this down into the five most important things that I learned during that time so that I could share them with you guys. And if you're someone watching this who is, you know, on the fence about going to study music, is about to go and study music or has just started studying music, hopefully by sharing these tips with you, you will have a better time overall when you're studying music at an academic level. And I feel like I should preface these tips by saying that I'm coming at this from the perspective mostly of uh, someone who went in to study music with the goal of becoming a session musician, which I imagine most of you will, who are thinking about studying music, that's probably what you're gonna want to do um, upon graduation. Not saying that's the case for everyone, but most instrumentalists and vocalists, drummers, bassists, keyboard players, guitarists, that's what they want to do eventually. They want to be session players and play for other people. Tip number one, is go in with an open mind. When I started, I was basically just a rock and blues guitar player. Even though I listened to other styles of music, those were the two styles that I played the most on guitar. So when I arrived as a fresh-faced 17-year-old at uni in my first year, I was encouraged, uh, I was encouraged to you know, start playing other styles of music. And I had to because that was part of our classes in first and second year, was learning other styles of music and playing them in a band. And this is good for two reasons. One is that it allows you to discover new styles of music that you're gonna love playing. So I, you know, started as a rock and blues player. I now love playing country, I love playing pop, I love playing funk, soul, all that good stuff. But I also, the other, the other reason why it's good is that it allows you to discover what you really don't like and what you don't want to um, end up playing for your career in the future. Um, I mentioned in another video that I have a lot of respect for people who, put, who just pour blood, sweat and tears into becoming really good jazz musicians, but I discovered at uni that I hate playing jazz. So I'm never gonna take a jazz gig in my life. And you know, that's something I discovered when I was at uni. So it's good to know both of those things that you're gonna discover new artists and new genres that you like playing and you're gonna discover what you also really don't want to be doing. Tip number two is don't let judgmental people try and alter your music taste. Okay, so when you start studying, you know, most people when they start, they're quite young, 17, 18, 19 years old. You're moving to a new city or probably moving away from home for the first time for most people. Uh, you're surrounded by new people and, you know, the people that you're in close proximity to most of the time are either like your flatmates or the people on your degree course. So your classmates and your on your music degree. So everyone wants to fit in. And if you're someone who, you know, likes to listen to Taylor Swift or on the other end of the spectrum, Norwegian black metal or something, and you're in a class and you know your classmates or your lecturers or your teachers start talking shit about those styles of music, those artists that you like, you can sort of start to feel kind of like ashamed of your music taste um, when you're that age and you can start to sort of, you know, feel like you should maybe be listening to the music that these guys are talking about. Um, so you might be like, you know, the biggest Justin Bieber fan in the world, but everyone else is talking about Snarky Puppy and Wolfpack and all these cool hip bands that you should be, you feel you should be listening to because everyone's talking about them when really all you want to do is this. So you can be a bit impressionable, I guess, when you first go to study music. It's not the case for everyone, but um, it kind of was for me. And, you know, further on through my degree, I realized, you know what, I don't really care what other people think. I'm just gonna listen to the styles of music that I want to listen to. I'm gonna play the styles of music that I want to play and still be exploring other styles that I've not really explored much in the past, um, which relates to the first tip that I had. So yeah, just stick to your guns. Doesn't matter if your lecturer thinks that pop music shit, just go, go ahead and keep listening to it. It's, you know, it's your music taste. If people want to pass judgment on you for that, 
then that's not your problem, that's their own immaturity showing. Tip number three, very important one, practice your ass off. A music degree is not this magical machine where you go in at one end, come out the other, four years later, three, four years later, and you're this magically improved musician, a magically improved version of the musician you were when you started three or four years ago. It doesn't work like that. You have to put the work in. Do the work that your guitar teacher tells you to do, or your voice teacher, or your drum teacher, whatever it is you're studying, do that work and also be exploring, you know, other material that you want to explore that you're not getting taught in your classes, like, you know, lessons that you find on YouTube or Truefire or Udemy. You need to be constantly striving towards being a better musician every day, okay? No one else is going to practice for you and no one else can. It is absolutely down to you to make sure that you're constantly improving as a musician. Don't waste three or four years not practicing or you're gonna feel pretty bad about it when you leave. Tip number four is don't be a yes man or a yes lady, at least not all of the time. So what this means is when you get to the end, towards the end of your degree in you know, third year or fourth year, you're gonna have to do final recitals or performance exams as we called them. And that's basically where you have to prepare around 30 minutes of material play it with a live band in front of examiners and an audience usually. And your live band is typically gonna be made up of people in your year group at uni. So you're sort of expected to help each other out with exams. You're not necessarily obligated to, but it's a good thing to do and it really is helpful. The problem with this is that you run the risk of taking on too much external work, you know, too much work for other people's exams when you're helping them out for free um, and that comes at the cost of cutting into time for your own work, your own exam. So myself and a few other classmates in third year, we definitely learned this the hard way. We just took on too many external exams for other people and that came at the cost of cutting into rehearsal times and preparation for our own exams. So you really have to think about how much external work do I want to take on? How much am I willing to take on? And um, yeah, you need to set limits for yourself. I think when I got to fourth year, my rule was basically, I will only play for people who have played for me in the past, are playing for me now, or have helped me out in some way or another, or who I trust will return the favor at some point in the future. That's another good rule of thumb. If you're gonna help someone out for free when you're at uni, make sure it's someone who you believe will return the favor to you at some point in the future. It doesn't have to be immediately. But if you think it's someone who really doesn't understand the sacrifice that you're making for them in terms of your time and your work, um, and you don't think that they're gonna repay the favor to you in the future, don't bother. Help people out for sure, it's a good thing to do, but set limits for this. Don't take on too much external work. Now this brings us to the final tip that I have for you guys, tip number five is realize why it is that you're there. Studying music is not like um, other degrees that you might find at university, like medicine or business, where you are working towards a good degree certificate. Like that's the sort of end goal, is a good degree so that you can go and get a job with that. It's not really the same in music. Yes, it is good, and it's certainly not gonna hurt you to have an impressive degree in music, but it's not really the end goal for most people because most musicians are self-employed, they do various types of work with various types of people, and a lot of these people, you know, they're hardly ever gonna be asking, what, what degree mark did you get? More often, they're more concerned with how good a player you are. You know, how good are you at singing? Um, what's your tone like? Uh, are you a good drummer? Um, you know, those are the kind of questions they're going to be um, asking themselves in their mind when they're, you know, auditioning you or, uh, you know, watching you online or, or, or stuff like that. So the degree doesn't matter so much when you're a musician. Yes, it is nice to have and it could be beneficial if you are applying, for example, to somewhere where you might be um, working as a music teacher. Um, then your degree certainly would come in handy. But if you're wanting to be a session musician, the degree marks don't really matter so much. 
you are there for the most part to become a better musician, okay? And that includes not only getting better at your instrument, but learning how to deal with different types of people, different types of stressful situations, you know, forging relationships with people who you could eventually work with in the future. Yeah, just becoming a more mature person and a more mature musician overall. So that is why you're there. In my personal opinion, if you get good marks and a good degree, then that is a bonus. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope that this was, uh, you know, beneficial for those of you, especially those of you who are, um, you know, watching this uh, with the intention of going to study music or you just started or you're on the fence about it and don't really know what to expect. I hope that this was helpful for you and I hope that it will, you know, change your experience for the better when you're going to study music at college or university. If you have more questions for me, you know, specifically about studying music, then drop a comment below and I'll answer you as best I can. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up below and click subscribe for more and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for watching.